So welcome everybody. Uh, good morning. We are happy to uh, be hosting this core coffee chat on building bridges to advance equity. I'm one of the co-hosts, Nicole Young, and I'm joined by my colleague, Nicole Lezen. And we are starting off the session doing consecutive interpretation provided by Stella Lauerman. And we're also joined today by a couple of our helpers, Nikki Bailey and Gisela Carrasco. Uh, so you'll see them either appear in the chat or on camera, um, helping us translate everything from English to Spanish. So again, we can have a dialogue in multiple languages. And right now I'd like to invite everyone to introduce themselves in the chat. So tell us your name and what group or organization you're with um, so we can see who all is here today. And today's uh, core coffee chat again is actually a follow-up to a webinar that several of us participated in last week. So we'll get to hear some ideas from that webinar that was done as part of National Public Health Week. And then we'll invite all of you to share your ideas, uh, any insights that you got if you participated in the webinar. And then hopefully walk away with some ideas about how we could use that information here in Santa Cruz County. To give our little overview of CORE, which is a collective impact initiative that Nicole Lez and I have been facilitating for the last few years. And CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And some of you might remember it started off as a funding model that the county and city of Santa Cruz adopted a few years ago now as their way of funding uh, safety net services that were results-based or evidence-based. Um, it's now also evolved into what we call a broader movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. So that's what CORE stands for. And after you know, many months and many uh, people providing input and feedback and ideas, uh, we arrived at this mission and vision statement for CORE to really try to capture what it is that we're trying to do through CORE as both a funding model and a movement. And it's really centered around collective action to create a safe, healthy, thriving, equitable community. Um, and again, you'll see how equity is front and center, both in these statements and really we, we try to keep it front and center in all uh, that we do through CORE. And when we say equitable health and well-being, really we mean that we want to make sure that all people across the lifespan have equitable opportunities to experience these eight interconnected opportunities or core conditions for health and well-being. Um, so we want to be able to uh, say with confidence that people's um, opportunities and their ability to uh, be healthy and be economically secure and live in safe, stable, affordable housing, that that's not dependent on or predictable uh, by things like race or ethnicity, gender identity, immigration status, um, that we want there to be equitable opportunities for everybody to experience these essential aspects of health and well-being. So as both a funding model and a movement, CORE provides a framework that really helps us identify and take action to align priorities and programs, as well as policies and funding, um, and really work towards achieving results around community-wide goals and impacts. Um, and so it, it provides, uh, at the very least, a helpful framework for us to you know, engage with others, collaborate with other organizations and other initiatives to identify how it is that we work together to create these core conditions for health and well-being. And again, notice how equity is at the center of this diagram. Uh, it illustrates um, that we have to be willing to examine not only the connections and the intersections between all those core conditions, but really look at and address how individual, organizational, and systemic beliefs and practices and structures either 
perpetuate the inequities that we're trying to eliminate or how we can use those in our favor to create more equitable opportunities and outcomes. And events like this core coffee chat that you're participating in today are offered under the broader umbrella of what we're calling the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. And the Core Institute really is just a name for the way we offer a variety of learning opportunities for people in nonprofits, as well as the public sector, so local government, grassroots groups, and even we have members of the business community participate in these sometimes. Um, and again, it's uh, all with kind of that broader goal or purpose of developing a shared vision and common goals and, and developing skills and capacity to increase our ability to work together and make our community a safe, healthy, vibrant place for all. So you will, over the coming months, see um, more coffee chat announcements and, and we're working towards offering a broader variety of trainings and coaching and technical assistance and other learning opportunities under the Core Institute. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over now to Nicole Lezen to give us an overview of the webinar that happened last week as part of National Public Health Awareness Week. Thanks, Nicole. I'm hoping that some of you on the call also had a chance to join that, uh, that webinar that Nicole just described, Building Bridges to Better Health. And it was featuring communities from around the country that were part of the Healthiest Cities and Counties Challenge. And Gisela is putting the link into the chat if you want to learn more about that challenge and those communities, that whole initiative. Um, but we were really excited to be able to attend that and wanted to share with you some of what we heard and learned from this webinar. And we also really, um, there's a recording of the whole thing on, on this website. But so if, if you have time and inclination, that's a good place to get more information than we're able to offer today. But we're also hoping that some of you who were there will chime in today and share what you heard in addition to what, what we heard and took away. So next slide, please. So one of the really cool things that we heard was this idea of six word stories. And each of the communities that was featured had a chance to describe all the wonderful things that they do crammed into six words, which is clearly a challenge. Um, but they were so inspiring and so unique. And um, we just thought that it would be fun to share those with you and then think about ways that we could do that. So we're gonna play a video from the webinar that shows the communities doing that. But as you listen, think about what you might do to describe your work or your place in six words, because we're going to try that ourselves. So here it is. The structural racism and need for healing that Dr. Nabig underscored are a central focus of the challenge. Challenge project teams are building bridges in their communities by engaging resident leaders in advisory boards, food policy council steering committees, community gardens, leadership academies, and more. Now, here's a heartfelt message from our 20 challenge communities about how this initiative has impacted their work to advance racial equity. I'm Flora from Community Care Hub in Cambria County, Pennsylvania, and our six word story in Spanish and English is Semillas regadas florecerán comunidades queridas. Seeds watered will flourish beloved communities. Hi, my name is Gwendolyn McNeil from the Cumberland County Department of Public Health in North Carolina. And our six word story is community involvement within Food Policy Council. Hey, this is Mike and Levine from Rochester, New York. And our six word story is Rochester residents driving the food policy change. I'm Grace Parker Zelensky from the Childhood Nutrition Collaborative in Tompkins County, New York. And our six word story is empowering us to target root causes. Hi, I'm Meg Oaks from Orange County Department of Health in Orange County, New York. And our six word story is links to food programs and farms. Hi, I'm Saujanya Nakaraju from Forsyth County, Georgia. Our six word story is data, coordinating services for vulnerable populations. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Sierra Watson from the Health Foundation out of Wilkes County, North Carolina. Our six word story is information builds understanding, understanding brings empathy. Hi, my name is Michelle McCall, Blippany.org in Deerfield Beach community. Our six word story is diverse community health leaders transferring power. I'm Reverend Alan Noah from Kerrville, Texas, Hope for Health. Our six word story is our community does better working together. Hi, I'm Sally from Greenbrier County, West Virginia, and our six word story is grassroots mini grants build equity in rural communities. Hi, I'm Jason from Elias Promise in New Brunswick, New Jersey. My six word story is everything can be overcome with time. Hi, my name is Esma Roda. I am the food policy coordinator from Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council in Collier County, Florida. Our six word story is building local infrastructure to improve food access. Hi, my name is Anthony Ritchie with the University of Louisville and the Food and Faith Coalition here in Perry County, Kentucky. We want to create change within communities and bridge the gap to access resources. That's why our six word story is building tools to fit all hands. Thanks. My name is Michaela Oldfield. I'm director of the Greater Cincinnati Regional Food Policy Council. And our six word story is changing mental models, challenging equity washing. Hello, my name is Fernando Jackson with Flint River Fresh and the Doherty Fresh Project. Through the Healthy Cities, Healthy Counties Challenge, we are advancing racial equity by teaching people how to grow food for themselves and the community where they live. Henry, residents, voices at the table. Hi, my name is Clara Harp, and I'm an AmeriCorps member serving as a navigator for the Cleveland Challenge team. Our six word story set against the backdrop of our city is bridging the gap, access drives equity. Somos líderes residentes de Chula Vista, California. Nuestra historia en seis palabras es equidad en comunidad. Salud para todos. Okay, some creative people out there. So I hope that gave you a flavor of what we heard and were inspired by from the webinar. And now we're hoping to replicate that closer to home. So maybe you thought of a six word story during that brief interlude. Maybe you were so captured by what was going on that you didn't, but we wanted to give you a moment right now. This is actually a screenshot from an earlier uh, Core Coffee Chat last year, but we hope some of the same people are with us today. And um, if you have a six word story to share in the chat, we would love to hear it. Or if you'd like to just speak it, um, just raise your hand and we'll make sure you can speak up for everyone. Any brave souls out there? Come on, this is a friendly crowd. <laughs> I think I can go. Uh, I would say together we can make a better community. Great, thanks. So was that Miguel? Yes, it's me. Hi, Miguel, welcome. Hi, and, thank and, you. And um, you, you were at the webinar, right? Yes, I was there yeah. last week, yeah. Last week, last and month. so, so um, did you have something else to add from those six word stories? Well, what, what was some of your takeaways from listening to those? Well, I think uh, all together we can do it by uh, keeping uh, a good, uh, sense of a uh, uh, goal and, and uh, you know, information and, and bringing opportunities and, and thoughts and solutions. So all together with all the ideas, uh, we can make it better community, yeah. Great, thanks for that. And Miguel? Yes. Would, would you actually mind saying your six word story again? I wanna um, okay. yeah. with you so that you can see your face while you're saying it. Yeah, together we can make a better community. Very nice. Thank Lovely. you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I see I see one in the chat. Oh. Let's see. Are there does anybody yeah. else want to share one? Oh, 
But Selena, would you like to say yours out loud or do you want us to read it for you? Hi all, um, sure, I don't mind saying it out loud. Um, I work with Santa Cruz Community Health. We have a, you know, our roots are in the feminist model and we advocate, you know, for social justice and, you know, physical health, emotional health or an integrative behavioral health setting. So it makes sense to me that we support and we advocate for physical, mental and social health because if mind, body and spirit aren't well, how are we, how are we okay? Great. Thanks, Rosalina. You're welcome. Thank you. So you can see how this really gets you to kind of distill the essence of what you're doing into very few words. It is possible. <laughs> Sometimes there's a little explanation around it, but um, anybody else? Nicole, this is Elisa from the Health Improvement Partnership. Hi, Elisa. How you doing? Good to see everyone on the call today. I think I have one. I just came up with it. Yeah, great. Um, Go for it. Thriving community through health leadership collaboration. Right on. That sounds like hip to me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Anybody else? We, we realize this is in the moment, so they don't have to be perfect. Just if, if anybody's inspired to string some words together, six of them, we'll even let you do seven. <laughs> for. Well, I'm not seeing anyone. I'll tell you what, as you, as you listen and you keep thinking of them, please keep entering them in the chat. And then um, maybe we'll revisit this at a future chat when we've had more time to reflect on them and, and see what people have come up with. We were also really liked the, the way that people, you, you could see them reading them, the videos and the, some creativity around the setting and you could see the background. So we may play with that a bit in the future as well. And we're gonna share some other ideas for showing what people are experiencing and the places where they live in the next couple of ideas. Nicole, you wanna share those? Sure, and so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about the core conditions uh, we always talk and think about it in terms of using an equity lens. And so for that, for us, that means, you know, how do we look at data, at outcomes, at indicators, at partnerships, and really looking at everything through the lens of equity. Uh, and when we do that, what does it reveal about um, people's strengths and, you know, community strengths, as well as the barriers um, and the root causes of inequities? Um, because the more that we can kind of teach ourselves and train ourselves to think and pl plan and act and evaluate in this way using an equity lens, uh, the more likely we are to be able to co-design effective solutions with the community. Um, and so the webinar um, about the Healthy Cities and Counties Challenge also had some really good ideas um, for literally framing and reframing uh, what we see. And some of you might already be familiar with these kinds of ideas and these tools, but we thought they would be worth mentioning um, because we think they have a lot of potential. And sometimes I know for myself, it's helpful just to get that reminder of, even if I already know a tool or I've used it before, sometimes I think, oh yeah, I forgot I knew that, or I forgot how to do that. And so we wanna share some of these and then invite you to tell us like if you've used any of these in your own work or if other ideas come to mind. Um, so one of the tools or one of the techniques uh, was shared by someone in the webinar who uh, uses actual frames it's as both a concept and a, and a physical tool. Um, it, the example was shared by a home visitor who uses, uh, again, an, an actual physical kind of do, uh, object, like with one side green and the other side red. Um, and then use that in home visits. So in this case, um, the home visitor used it with a child that they were visiting and asked the child to share, um, you know, what, what are some things they don't like about, what, about where they live? So that would be the red side of the frame. And, and the child said um, about uh, his bedroom, well, I can touch the ceiling, it's too low. So that was something that, you know, again, in the world of a child was something really important to be able to say. Uh, and then the home visitor had the child flip the frame over to see the green side and then asked, 
you know, uh, the child to share something that he loved or enjoyed. And he pointed to his mom and said, I love my mom. Um, so again, it's just a really simple, but beautiful and powerful way to, to um, you know, to, to invite, you know, whether you call them clients or participants or family or community members into the discussion about, um, again, strengths and, and barriers and challenges. Um, another tool some of you may be familiar with, um, you know, in kind of the olden days, we would use, you know, uh, like disposable cameras to collect um, photos for what are often called photo voice projects. You know, nowadays we have uh, a lot of people that have smartphones, right? That can take pictures and see them right away. Um, so however you do it, it's a great way to be able to document things, to record things as both a before and after a picture of, you know, whether it's neighborhoods um, or, you know, parks or areas of the community that um, could use some support and, and resources. So one of the examples shared in the webinar was a woman um, who told a story about taking a picture of a store that sold liquor uh, and that the liquor was at a, at a child's eye level uh, near a school. And so the photo was sent to a member of the city council. And then that was really kind of the launching point for that person's uh, advocacy you know, uh, trajectory and, and, and passion and, and, you know, and found that that was a really effective way to communicate a story and a need and a call to action. And so those were, those were just a couple of the examples that we heard about in the webinar. We're curious to hear from all of you. Do any of you use tools like this? The framing and the flip side, using things like photos or videos to communicate about needs and actions. Again, you can share it in the chat or if anyone wants to unmute themselves, you're welcome to do that. I see Nikki's hand raised. Yeah, go ahead, Nikki. Hi everyone. Um, one of my previous experiences and something that we did when I worked at the middle school level was that we would actually do home visits. We would sit down with parents, regardless of, you know, whether they lived in the fanciest of houses or if they didn't, and be able to help suggest like, hey, this would be a great space for the child to, you know, do work and try to reassure them that with what they had, they were able to commit and they were able to incorporate and participate with all the other students because we did have a lot of low income students. So being able to assure them that us coming to their home wasn't a negative thing because in that neighborhood at that time it was. And so you being able to reassure them with that in their security in their own home was a big part of assuring the parents and the students that they were making the right choice at going to that school, that we were there for them. Because a lot of previous schools had not been able to communicate and add parents' involvement as well as what we were doing at the middle school level. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Nikki. I know we have some home visiting programs in our community as well that, um, that find the same thing. It's such a powerful way to um, kind of meet families where they are and, and understand their, both again, both their strengths and their needs from, from their perspective. So thanks for sharing that. Anyone else like to share something in the chat or out loud about whether you've used tools like the framing or photo voice or other tools to again, um, Kind of frame issues or engage people in discussions about strengths and needs in the community. Okay, well, don't be surprised if you see some of these tools uh, start to show up or be used in our future coffee chats and core conversations. Maybe you could frame your six word story. <laughs> Com combo like plan. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, Nicole, you want to move on? Yes, let's do that. So we love to feel that Santa Cruz County is unique and special, and it, it truly is. It's a really unique place. But we, one of the things we're always reminded of when we go to these national webinars, it used to be conferences, is just how many familiar themes there are from other places. And you may have felt that way listening to some of those six word stories. But some of the things that pop for us and Miguel or others who were at the meeting, please feel free to chime in on, on other themes that you heard. But one prominent one was just building on community strengths. And we can never be reminded of this too often, but just that the, the neighborhoods and um, cities and counties that you heard from were all places that were struggling to various degrees, but then there was some kind of um, a spark or group of committed people and advocates or organizations working together who, who saw something through that frame, that red frame that they didn't like and they wanted to change. And they, they did, but they did so by building on some strengths that were already there. Sometimes they had to convince each other that they did have some strengths, but they you know, built a community garden, as you saw, or um, managed to get a, a bus route changed so that people could get to a grocery store more easily. Um, the, the liquor example that, that Nicole shared, um, changing a, a green space that was very welcoming to some white community members and did not feel that way to people of color. So they, they really did um, find some ways to, to build on what was already there as a community strength. And then the human-centered design piece really came out a lot too. This has really become kind of a, a Silicon Valley buzzword um, related to designing things for, for that are appealing to people, but it, it really has its roots um, in much, much older approaches and, and ways of thinking about who is experiencing something and trying to experience things through their eyes. Again, getting back to that framing and the equity lens. And so the, the grocery store bus route example that I just mentioned about the community strengths, somebody accompanied a person who wanted to get to a grocery store that was a mile from her house. She had to take several different buses. She had to wait at each stop. And on the way back, she was limited to, the bus company had a limit on the number of bags you could bring onto a bus at any one time. And so this woman was trying to navigate a trip to the store with three kids that was a mile from her house and it was taking her at least 40 minutes each way. And so they just tried to figure out a way to restructure that route, make it easier for people who lived in that neighborhood to get to the grocery store and back and to carry more than four bags. So there are things that, you know, that that the people who were in a position to influence that change and, and had some power to influence that change were not the ones experiencing it, but doing a sort of um, walk in my shoes or try, try to see things through somebody else's perspective really changed that. And there were a lot of comments like that during the webinar of, I may not experience this personally, but when I step into somebody else's life and space, um, even for just a few minutes or hours, it's a totally different story. I experience my community in a different way. And so that really gets to the, the empathy piece as well. There were a lot of stories that, that built on those things like framing and, and photo voice about um, trying to understand how somebody else experienced the same community. There was one woman from North Carolina um, early on in the webinar who talked about how the way that she experienced her community as a, a relatively privileged white person was so different from the people that she was working with. And it really opened her eyes that she was the one that had the green space example that that kids, her kids age who were wearing a hoodie or were um, from a different neighborhood didn't see that green space as a community asset because they didn't feel welcome there. And so she really worked to change that. And then another theme was just the persistence. Um, I think one of the six word stories had to do with everything can be changed with enough time. So there were a lot of comments and remarks about you know, there was urgency and impatience to change things, but also a uh, feeling that sticking with it and not giving up and moving through obstacles really did finally yield some results. And of course, the, the collaboration that, that Lisa mentioned in her six word story just now, that there were always partners to rely on, unexpected partners and collaboration, but the theme that, that all of this work was so hard to do alone. And we certainly hear that with, with our core work. 
So um, Miguel, not to put you on the spot, but if there, if you or others who were there, are there other themes that you heard that aren't captured by these or different dimensions of these? Does any, mm -hmm. anybody want to share? Well, I believe you cover it very, very beautifully. Uh, it's just collaboration and, and um, keeping everybody in contact, communication, collaboration, and uh, like you said, uh, persistence. And uh, yeah, just staying there, communicating each other. Okay, thanks, Miguel. Nikki, mm -hmm. I see your hand up. Okay, sorry. I actually wrote it down because I thought it was a, a great example. It was something I previously did not know but it's a, a model, I guess. Oh, Nikki, you're muted. Nikki attended a different yeah. uh, breakout session than Miguel and I did. Go ahead, uh, Nikki. So um, one of the samples is from Heather from Wilkes County. She mm -hmm. talked about having a human-centered design. And the best example that, because it helped me visualize, was an equilateral triangle of people processes and programs and it's a system that changes the relationship based on you know if one of those three points changes and so for example if the human or the people change then the process and the programs change if the process changes then the programs and the people change and so it's kind of a, a triangle circuit that one affects the other mm -hmm. and i thought that was you know almost eye-opening because it's true if you know you change what programs are available you're changing people and people's lives and you're changing the process of how everything happens and I just it just made a light bulb go off in my head Great. well that's that's one of the great things about listening in on these webinars with all these other ideas they do make a lot of light bulbs pop um, and yes, she really spoke to the, the connectedness of all these things. So if you if you put pressure on this one part of the triangle that it can really have some ripple effects elsewhere. Um, Miguel and I went to the breakout session that featured the team from Chula Vista because um, at least Miguel, I, I thought it'd be interesting to hear from a California group since, since we were hearing from people in other parts of the country. And they had something called the um, Resident Leadership Academy. And it was, um, just uh, if you were a community member who who was interested in a particular topic, whether it was land use development or climate change or healthy eating and physical activity, they had these these um, trainings that were kind of like some of the things we're envisioning for the core institute, where you would kind of learn how to how to talk to a city council member or how to um, how to write an op ed for the paper or how to um, how to organize a group in your neighborhood to do something like a photo voice project and then have a, a gallery showing of the pictures or um, all kinds of things and just just to really give people the tools and the ideas, but also the um, the space to do those things. Um, if they needed just a little bit of support to get going and then uh, really run with it so Miguel did you hear anything else in that group that that was interesting and you thought might apply here? Yes, I think, uh, like you said, that they got uh, um, uh, very good ideas and, and they, they uh, <clears throat> got trainings and everybody was called an associate or something like that. So yeah, that's right. they had a kind of a title that uh, you feel proud of. So it was very cool. I like it. Yeah, and they had, um, they really tried to make people feel that they'd accomplished or something which they had and they I think they had the mayor come to their graduation ceremony um, just to kind of put this special touch on it and so some of the people had never graduated from anything before so it was really important to them to have the ceremony and the celebration was anybody else who's on today's call part of last week's meeting would, would like to add anything We hope this has inspired some ideas for you from other places, and we'll keep doing this. We, we do this even if we're not attending a webinar. We try to really keep um, in touch with what's going on in other places, and, and so we can beg, borrow, and steal ideas to bring here to Santa Cruz. So we hope people are learning from us, too. Nicole, I'll turn it back over to you. OK. 
you. And, you know, along those lines, we're, even if you didn't attend the webinar last week, we're interested in hearing what kinds of ideas or insights come to mind after, you know, just hearing this little recap and, and some of the examples. Um, and also drawing from your own experience, you know, living and working here in Santa Cruz County, uh, what bridges do you think we need to be building here to advance equity in Santa Cruz County? What are some of the actions? You know, there's a lot of organizations and people that are trying to learn more and have more discussions about equity and what that really looks like in their individual organizations and across you know, collaboratives and, and across systems. Um, we know we often hear that there's a kind of a follow-up question about, okay, and then what, or what's next, or what does that actually mean in terms of action? And so we're curious to hear your thoughts about what bridges need to be built or are in the process of being built. Does anybody have any good examples of where you see organizations or, or groups of people doing some really interesting, inspiring work to advance equity in our community? or examples of things that you see happening within your own agencies that maybe either you're part of or... Yeah, I see Carmen's comment in the chat about, you know, the bigger bridge to be built is between North and South County. And that's been a, you know, a long ongoing need, right? Carmen, would you be willing to unmute yourself and say a little bit more about the need that you see and whether you have ideas about how that could happen or the how that should happen? Hi. Uh, to me, it's like, this is, has gotten so old. It's been in so many conversations and I, I just, <laughs> I was even thinking about not even putting anything because to me, it's just like, you know, um, you always have to remind people about the existence of South County and about the value of people in South County and um, about, you know, it's, it's just um, th that South County, it, people, when they refer to Santa Cruz, they always refer mostly to the city of Santa Cruz and they in that vision. And I just feel like, um, I mean, that's a big, big picture thing. And there are a lot of things that could be done on that. I think it's, it's, I, I, I just don't, don't have enough um, time to <laughs> say as much. I, I mean, I think it's a very, it's a very general way of saying things, but I really think that, um, I think that's the main one. Like when people talk about Santa Cruz, they're thinking mostly about um, uh -huh. city of Santa Cruz, the beach, the uh -huh. the hipster views of things. Um, you know, I I've been in meetings. I mean, this was a while back, but where people we were told in a public setting at the university that the creative people are in Santa Cruz in the north and that Watsonville, well, there's no cry creativity really. And it was at the time that we were building the kitchen and I was like, really? <laughs> so, you know, I had to say something, but it's, I think that is still pretty much there. Mm. So I think that, and I say that I've said this in so many, so many forums and settings that it's, gotten old to be honest yeah, yeah. We, we hear the weariness in your voice carmen thank you for bringing that to this group 
Yeah, I mean, it's always fighting for mm-hmm. for what for the South. Like that's not the first thing in the mind of leadership many times. And, I mean, I, I think that's, in general, we could have discussions about mm-hmm. particular things or particular sectors or, I mean, even in education, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not in education, but we all know that people don't, you know, there's always less resources for education in top County when we have the youngest, you know, population. And, and that's just one of many. And I'm pretty sure that if we were to do an assessment, that was going to show off. And, but then the other thing is that when people talk about Santa Cruz and they wanna also feature, oh, we have like the best agriculture, oh, and then they're proud of the agriculture, but they're not really proud of the people that work in the agriculture or the people that live in South County. So mm-hmm. it's, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Carmen. And maybe uh, we can kind of build on this conversation. And and because I see, you know, Viviana had uh, said an enthusiastic yes, Carmen. So clearly, you know, this, what you're saying and sharing is resonating with others. So I'd like to just invite anyone else that would like to, you know, if especially if you have specific ideas about, okay, so how, you know, what are some ways that that collectively we could um, try to shift some of that mindset, um, you know, build that bridge because it, 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 you know, it is one of those enduring issues that has come up over and over and over for, you know, many decades. So how do we, what can, what can we do collectively about that? Anyone have ideas they want to throw out there? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just like to say that, um, I, I agree with Carmen and a lot of things that she said, And I think um, for me personally, uh, I'm new to Santa Cruz County. I just came to Santa Cruz County in 2019. But what I can say about the South County is that being um, in the Head Start, um, you know, aspect of the world, I've gotten a lot of opportunities to speak and um, represent South County in a lot of different ways. So I really appreciate um, Head Start for allowing me to do that. And I think that what we can do is, um, you know, allow other opportunities for other young leaders like myself to uh, represent South County in that way, because there is a lot of strong uh, leaders here in South County. I mean, we're doing some really great, amazing things. And like Carmen said, like, oh, they're very proud about the ag stuff. There's so many smart people in the agricultural field that I know that can represent South County in a significant way. So, you know, just allowing opportunities in that way um, for people to speak and, you know, represent South County, I think that would help build the bridge in some way. And like I said, I agree to everything that Carmen is saying, and I hope that maybe sometime me and Carmen can talk one-on-one. But yeah, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for Head Start, I don't think I would have a lot of opportunities that I have, um, speaking engagements and that kind of thing. and I've grown a lot in that way as well. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thanks, Viviana. And it's a, it's a good reminder actually that, um, you know, we have some examples of things like the Resident Leadership Academy that Nicole was sharing that, you know, that Chula Vista had talked about and, you know, Head Start's Parent Policy Council, I think is one of those, Live Oak Cradle to Career and their work around you know, developing parent leadership and developing a promotorist um, program, I think are good examples that um, I think that's part of what we want to do is really look to some of those existing groups or efforts like that and figure out, okay, how, you know, are there ways to support some of those efforts or link them together or figure out, okay, where are the places that those, you know, community leaders, parent leaders, youth leaders um, need to have a, you know, a speaking stage and is there, you know, some something that we through core might be able to help uh, create mm-hmm. some of that space as well. So that's actually just, a, I would say an open invitation for anybody on this call that feels like, hey, <laughs> there's an issue I care really deeply about. We have some amazing leaders that are ready to speak about this. We need an audience, like that's something we could think about also um, ways that we could use some of these core coffee chats for that. 
And yeah. I also think, Nicole, listening to Carmen's comment about hearing dismissive comments in a meeting about South County, I mean, people, this shouldn't be the burden on just people from South County or who live and work there. But those of us who don't live and work in South County need to call out that kind of behavior when, when we witness it um, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Miguel, were you about to say something? Yeah, I have a, a thought I, I shared in, in the chat uh, that I have a thought to get together as a community with some organizations like businesses, uh, community leaders, like people, like students, parents, uh, as well as authorities like the city mayor and uh, school and police to discuss uh, community issues that uh, we as a community, we can solve together. Uh, having different ideas, like uh, I think Carmen said, or Viviana said that uh, uh, in the agricultural uh, uh, sector, there are a lot of people who has a lot of uh, bright ideas and they're very smart. So getting together and share those ideas would be great for all of us as a community to you know, share and solve problems. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. And while you're doing that, Nicole, I see Anna has her hand raised. Anna, do, do you want to unmute and say something? Yes, thank you, Nicole. Um, I just wanted to add that I think part of um, part of what is happening with when we talk about equity, um, I think we have to start recognizing where is it that inequities are happening. Um, and I do agree that we do see more inequities happening in South County, um, but more deeply, I do have to say that we started looking at our data within our uh, Head Start program, um, an early Head Start program. Um, we have data around which families have highest needs. And in our program, it's been several years that like, for example, one of the highest needs continues to be housing. Recently, we started looking at it by uh, race and ethnicity, and we've been finding that the majority of the families that have been impacted by the highest needs or uh, might be at higher risk um, in our program are families that are, are from Latino or Hispanic uh, backgrounds. Um, mainly, again, you know, South County, but there are families um, in North County that have that need. So I do think that we do need to start looking at recognizing it um, and acknowledging that and bringing that, that to the spaces. And also thinking about ways that we can take action towards that, um, that we can change like for example one of the other things that i can share is like I, and i think you're most the most most of you are aware like the vaccine uh or like the number of COVID cases in our county um the majority of the data points to uh majority of the cases being south county but when we're looking at vaccines um and who is accessing demographically in our county it's mainly south uh, north county that is accessing it rather than South County. And when we're looking at the clinics and where, they're, um, where they've been made available and how they've made, been made available, um, it does you know, leave some inequities there in, in terms of access. Um, like I'm thinking, for example, the fact that most of the information was made available um, by registration online, a lot of our Latino families do not have access or do not know how um, to register online. Um, so that in and of itself is, you know, creating inequity in terms of access. Um, so we do have to keep in mind um, as, you know, community providers and programs and in collaboration to think about ways of giving equitable access um, to families that might have not, be, you know, might not be able to access, you know, services, even though we're putting them out there even though, you know, that's, that's what our intention might be, um, you know, to have them available for everyone, but really thinking and reflecting, like, is this being accessible by everyone? Or is there a group that I'm missing in my, um, you know, whatever it is, promotion of, you know, services, 
um, or you know campaigns or you know whatever it is that we're working on, um, so that it, it you know hopefully that that changes and bringing it again you know to the spaces in partnership. A lot of us are starting to work in partnerships. I think there's a lot of community efforts um, happening right now. Um, yeah, so just you know just bringing that bringing that to the space and not forgetting about it. I think we've we've really built a you know, as a nation and as a county, I think we're looking at more, um, this more, you know, than before. Thank you for that, Anna. You, you actually did such a beautiful job of weaving together multiple <laughs> points from the webinar in your example, in your local example, right? About, you know, using data with an equity lens, which means actually looking at not just your data overall, but breaking it down and looking at, are there differences um, that you can uh, detect, you know, by race or ethnicity or other demographics, you know, the human centered design and, and empathy. So uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, see that Carmen has her hand raised again, and then, uh, and then we'll start our wrap up. So Carmen, you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Yeah, I just want to clarify. I mean, I think there are a lot of efforts, especially things that happen because of COVID here in South County. But is that part about always having to fight if it wasn't because, you know, there are a group of leaders here uh, in, in South County that uh, started that triage group, uh, things would have not gone that well for South County. And I mean, it's still every time, everything that was happening, everything need that was there had to be fought, fought for. You know, instead of that being something that happens just because there's a priority for uh, South County, you know, even in our sector, we had to do a lot of advocacy to make sure that, you know, things were, um, you know, in, at the very beginning, because of the way policy works uh, and the systems are designed, um, uh, the businesses that we serve were automatically excluded from anything, you know, so we actually had to create an alternative system and that takes time and that puts you behind and that, you know, it's, it takes a lot more work to get something done in South County than what is there for everybody, you know, so I just want to clarify that I'm not there's a lot of brilliant hardworking people that are doing amazing things here in South County, but it's the fact that it has to take so much effort for things to happen. Mm -hmm. Understood, yeah. To be, yeah. yeah. And then the, better start out that way, yeah. And then the important question is how do you, how do we, right? We all collectively make sure that then that becomes embedded in just our, in our norms, right? In our ways of working so that it's not just, okay, that worked, took care of it when COVID happened, but then have to go through that, you know, <laughs> that whole process, the advocacy, the fighting for it, you know, the uh, convincing people the next time a crisis happens or the next time an issue comes up, but how do we really start, you know, make sure that gets institutionalized, you know, thinking back to the um, framework that Nikki was talking about a moment ago about people process, right, and programs that the hope is that, um, as people change in organizations that we don't lose that, right? The commitments, the partnerships, the, uh, the norms that we have maybe worked so hard to build. This has been a great discussion. Um, thank you all for sharing, for those of you that participate in the webinar and sharing your additional insights, those of you that share additional ideas just about what else we could be doing locally to build, build bridges to advance equity. We are at the end of our time. Um, as usual, we would appreciate your feedback through the um, survey on SurveyMonkey. You can scan the QR code with your camera app on your, on your smartphone if you have one, um, or click the link and um, Giselle is gonna put the links in the, has put the links in the chat. We would really appreciate if you click on the link um, it'll open up a tab in your web browser and then fill out one of the surveys in English or Spanish. We do look at all the feedback and, and learn from it and try to use that to plan future Core Institute events. So 
we hope you will fill that out and uh, stay tuned for announcements about upcoming core events. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, and you can fill it out at your leisure, but sooner is better. <laughs> thank you, Nicole. You're welcome, see you soon.